If you are a content creator, maybe you run live streams or you're like me and you run training and workshops, you're probably looking for some ways to make your workflow more efficient or streamline things when you're actually creating content or running a presentation. So today I'm gonna to share about the Loop Deck Live, which I've been using for the last six weeks, both to run workshops and for going live on YouTube. I'm gonna share my feedback, what I have found and how I've set this up and also how you can set it up if this is something that might be right for you. Now, if we have never met before, my name is Kat and I help people to create more professional and engaging online presentations. And sometimes you have a lot of things going on, a lot of moving parts. For me, I'm usually presenting and I have Ecamm typically with different scenes. I'm also going to be controlling or running Zoom and I can have a few other things going on, making sure that my mic is not muted, etc. When it comes to using a device like this, which is a programmable accessory, it is like a companion to your keyboard and your mouse. So let's take a look at what it actually looks like. So here is the loop deck. It is sitting on my desk right now. So you can see here's my, my keyboard and this is the actual device. And you can see based on my hands approximately how large it is. So it's actually a really nice size and fits on my desk. If we look sideways, you can see it's on a small stand and it has a USB-C cable, which is how it connects to your computer. Now the actual device itself has a few different features. So you will see that there are 12 programmable touch keys in the center. Down the side, we have three dials, which are also, not only do they turn, they're also buttons. And then down along the bottom, you will see that there are eight different buttons. So there's a few different options that you have for this. Now, one of the things I wanna do is show you how the app works. And I will say one of the things that was really nice is the introduction and orientation to get you started. And once you are introduced to the app, it's actually fairly easy to set up. And I'm going to show you how you can set up. I've got a little sample space ready to go but let's take a look at the app itself. So here you can see the Loop Deck app. It will tell you which device you're using. So in this case, I am using the Loop Deck Live. You also have the option to set up multiple profiles if you want. There are some profiles that are already created for certain apps. For example, Ecamm Live, Final Cut Pro, and Premiere Pro. There's also an OBS plugin as well. Now I personally, keep dynamic mode off. Now, the reason that I do this is because if I am running a workshop where maybe I've got Ecamm running and I've got Zoom running and maybe I've got some slides going, I don't want my loop deck to switch between different profiles when I switch between different applications. So personally, I like to have a little bit more control. So I turn the dynamic mode off and I have opted to just use one main profile. So let's go back and take a look. What you will find here, there is a demo of what's going on with the different keys you have programmed. You also will see down the side, there are a number of different actions and this is how you can add actions to your loop deck. Over here, you'll see the navigation. There are desktop controls. We have navigation actions. You have custom actions that you can ascribe. We've got OBS Studio. It's not currently launched, so you can't see it in action. And we have Ecamm Live, which I am currently using to record this video. So when it comes to setting things up, you will see a preview here of the screen. Now that green, these are the different workspaces. So for a profile, you can have multiple workspaces. So I've got my main one, which is showing right now. This is my everyday sort of productivity, getting work done behind the scenes. I have my Ecamm, which is more of a streaming profile. And I have a sample one set up. So if we click on the one, it will actually switch to the streaming profile. Let's take a look at the live application beside the application. So we have the loop deck here on my desk. You can see I'm now on the streaming one and this streaming profile or workspace allows me to set up some custom actions. For example, if I wanna switch from showing both the app and the camera of the loop deck, maybe I just wanna show the app I can press that button and it will switch the scene for me in Ecamm. So that's one of the ways that I've programmed it. I also have a few other things in here. For example, hide the last comment, launch into live demo mode. 
I can show my link for my gear page and specific scenes, preview mode, and I can also mute my microphone. Along the side, if we click on the buttons, you will see some of these buttons do have some things in here. For example, I have mute zoom because I wanted to make sure when I'm running a live workshop using Ecamm that I can quickly mute zoom, which is different than muting an Ecamm. I also have Notion open for when I'm doing a Notion training or demo. And I also have the option to both open Keynote for a slideshow and I can use the arrow to actually progress forward or backwards in my slides. So these are some of the ways that you can use these keys. You will also see down here, this is actually programmed for go live. Now I did this on purpose because I wanted to be able to have a more tactile, purposeful button. I did not necessarily want to hit one of these touch screens and accidentally go live or end my stream. So I purposely decided to program this key. So what you will notice is if it's green at the bottom, which you can see here, that means that it's a workplace. And if it's purple, that means that it is a shortcut or one of the actions that's been programmed in. So let's take a look at a sample space. So I set up this workspace here called sample to show you how you can set up your actions. So one of the things you can do is actually just click on the plus. You will see that there's a plus here and you can run a macro, a keyboard shortcut, run a program, link to a web page, make a sound, and you can enter some text. So let's look at running a program. So perhaps I want to record something quick for a demo and I'm gonna use Loom so I can share it. I can write the name of the button and then you can either paste the path or you can navigate to the applications folder and I will go down here until I find the app and say open. One of the things you can do next is hit create and then an icon will appear. So the default icon is simply the name, which you can see here, it just says Loom. And you have the option to customize your icons. So you can either grab an icon that you already own or you can search in the icon library. So if I thought that maybe this looked like a screen recording and wanted to use that, I can simply choose one. I can also resize this if I wanted to zoom in. <laughs> if I wanna zoom in on this, I can easily do that here and click save. So you can make custom icons and have these customized the way you want, whether that's uploading one from a file or using the library that they have available, or you can simply use the default, which is the text. The other thing you can do is simply drag and drop. So if I want to have Keynote, I can drag that, drop it here. This one does not have a custom icon. If I want to say open Slack, I can move that over here. This one, I actually added the Slack icon. There are some that are built in because LoopJack is already optimized for certain programs, such as the editing programs we saw. So if I wanted to drag over and have Photoshop open, some of these do have the icons, but not all of them. So those are some of the ways you can quickly add to the touch keys. When it comes to these program buttons, you can click on it and you'll see add action here. So I can actually drag and drop. So maybe I want to navigate to one of my workspaces and I would like this to navigate to my Ecamm. I can drop that over here. And now you'll see it's actually green because that's a workspace. If I decide I want to get rid of that, I can actually just X that out and then it's gone. When it comes to the dials, when you click on any of the dials, all of the options will open. So now you can see that there are two different types for every dial. There is the little dial rotation and there's a dial press. Something that I really like is that if you go over here, you can actually toggle between these. So if I wanna see all of the rotation plugins, I can just click rotate and now it will only show me the ones for rotations. I can also quickly collapse any of these groupings. But let's say I want to program a dial for media. I can say, okay, I want to use this for my volume knob. I can do that. And you can reset the volume. That one came with it. 
but perhaps you want to have your track media. So where is the, let's, we can also use the search and we can see there's some over here. So media track control. So perhaps I want to control the media, meaning next song, next song, previous song. I can do that. This is something I use every single day. And maybe I want to be able to start and stop the music. So I've got media up here. I can uncheck this and can do press and look for media. And over here in the operating system, I can see that there is a press or uh, play or pause. So I can drag that over here. Now I've got this dial, which I can rotate for which track I want to hear. And I can press on the dial to start and stop my music. So that's an example of how you can use the dial and you can quickly sort and filter which ones you want to see by clicking on either the press or the dial, or you can see all of the options together. So that's a quick overview of how you can quickly add things and customize the workspace. And I find this really easy and intuitive to use. One of the things that I will say about the actual buttons is that they are a little bit sensitive. So one of the things that I have noticed, for example, if I'm on my streaming profile and I want to switch to a scene, I can't just feel which button. So I usually will have to glance down. That being said, when I was using the stream deck predominantly, I would also usually glance as well. But that is why I do specifically program things like my go live in the bottom corner or having things like the opening keynote with the side here and then also being able to use the dial to go advance through slides and go backwards in slides. So those are some of the decisions that I personally made when it comes to setting up the loop deck. So six weeks of using it, <laughs> what are my thoughts? Personally, I am using this every single day. I really like it for productivity, meaning getting my work done. I find that I am using it to launch common apps that I'm using all the time. One press button launches it. I love that. I also use it for things like screen captures. I take a lot of screen captures or full screen or window captures, and I use this every single day for that purpose as well. I also really like the dials. I now feel like it's more intuitive to control my music or the tracks with the dial as opposed to using the keyboard keys or using the mouse. So it's become part of my everyday workflow. When it comes to running workshops and presentations, I do like having the option of both buttons and the, the, the tactile buttons, the touch buttons and the dials. And there are a few different things that you can do with dials that you can't do with only a button. And many of the things that you can do with something like the Stream Deck, you can do with Loop Deck, like having a multi-step action, running a macro. So you can do more than one thing with a button. So this is actually a really nice tool. The other thing that I've really enjoyed is if we take a look again at, at this, the size itself, and let's switch here. So I find this is a really nice size for the desk. And now you can't adjust the actual height. The, the stand is just one stand. I mean, you could prop it up on something. And I will also say that the button presses, they're not quiet. So if I wanted to press these, I don't know if you can hear that, but I definitely can. So I could always put something a little bit softer, which would probably reduce the sound. But overall, I'm really happy with the size and the real estate. I know that this is something that comes up fairly regularly when people are thinking about adding anything to their workspace. What do you need to see all at once? And how much room or real estate do you have? Now you are able to add extra pages. For example, on this page here, I could add a second page so that I can have even more things on here. And if we look at an example, if I go to this first profile here, if you look at my hand, I can actually swipe to have multiple pages. Here's a calculator. And you can also swipe up here in order to have different controls. So there are different levels and layers. It's not just 12 per page there. You can actually add extra pages and that is a nice option. Now, if you are someone who does like the idea of having separate profiles, at the moment, you can't navigate between profiles using the keys. 
I understand that this is something that might be coming soon, maybe by the time you actually watch this. I thought this would be an issue, but actually I don't use that many pages. So everything I need to do, I'm able to do within my one default profile. Keep in mind, I don't use the dynamic profile and I'm not big on editing. <laughs> so if I were starting to get into some of this, more of the Adobe Premiere Pro with editing videos, et cetera, I think it'd be nice to have that separate editing profile. But at the moment, that's just not realistic for me, but I think the granular control of editing with the dials would be really nice because I find a little bit finicky when, I'm, when I am editing and I think that's a nice option. The other thing, if I had a wish list, would be when you add an application, I really wish that the icon would come along with it so you don't have to update your own. However, this is a small thing and really doesn't irk me that much. Once I have it set up, it is set up and it will remember the icon that you've chosen and it's pretty easy to swap out your icons. But all in all, this is something that I am using every day and will continue to be part of my regular workflow. I do like the addition of the dials. They can do things that just buttons can't do. So if you have questions, leave them in the comments and I'd love to know, is this something you think would help you to create more professional and engaging online presentations?